um, and talk about these teams as you've got Bog and Air on the DPS roll there. Winter maining the solo tank and then Swagmaster and Adoration on the support line should be fun. Again, 6 and 0 oh going into this um going into this uh the, these playoffs here, right? And let me take a look at Lander University here. Yeah, so we're going to have Last and Sparrow rocking down that DPS line with Rock, J, Shady, and Rialis rounding out that team. Another extremely talented team. I mean, both teams made their way here for a reason. Those two uh, maps, like you were talking about, mostly Brawl. You're gonna, then if we head to Sanctum, that's going to where the weird things come in. Especially in the Emergence tier, we could see some more wacky things coming out. Not nah, this... Um, and again, it is all kind of a guessing game right now i would say because the meta just changed two days ago they, there hasn't been enough time to really get um a feel for this uh this current meta that we're going into but right now i mean from what we saw in the maryville fisher game um ramatra's pretty good and we're seeing rockjaw from lander university come out on that right now yeah, no surprises here. As I mentioned, this map was going to lend itself pretty well to a brawl composition, but the CSU Vikes are playing a version of their own that we saw peak out recently with this Sigma, with the Lucio Baptiste, and uh, Bog on this mate can do a lot of damage to Rock Don the Ramacho being able to slow him down and put a lot of pressure onto them, but the same could be said for last onto Winter. Yeah, I know definitely is. Uh, they're going to use that uh, semester teleport to try to maybe get in the back line, try to get out some of uh, CSU already. But right now, no one's really found anything. Just still this waiting game looking for uh, uh, this first pick as the Maywalls come out. And now it's going to be uh, Lander University taking the point early on. Now, uh, both immortality fields can come in. Now, this could be a true elimination. True damage could come out from both of these two squads. So they're chasing down the reigning members. Bob. I'm trying to go down. Gonna be have to force ice block, but air is gonna be the one to find the first pick in the fight. It might be yes. Yeah, CSU is gonna be able to come in off the back of that and come in, find the picks necessary to take back this point. Yeah, that was CSU Vikes playing a really nice, patient game, allowing air to take the angles they needed and find those rail shots and open things up. Because that's the thing. I talked about how these maids are going to be very pivotal for um, going against these tanks and being able to isolate. Because normally, if you isolate a Sigma versus a Ram, Sigma has a shield. He has that Gravitic Flux, and uh, he has a lot that he can use to sustain himself. I mean, Ramacha also has that Annihilate, uh, the... The, the form, but it's it's a really big cooldown for Amatra to be losing. And Matrix starting things off from Shady to try to get back in. And there's Swagmaster not having it up quite just yet. Now it's just going to allow Lander University to come back to the point without really any contest. But now the Ultimates are going to be in the favor of CSU. And they're going to be using that Matrix early on. We're rotating around now with a Photon Barrier coming out. There's the Critic Flux as well. But it, right now, Lander has the upper hand. And they are going to keep, keep that in their way. As Rockjaw finding Bog, Sparrow finding Winter. And well, that's going to be the point flipped to Lander University. Yeah, playing the Sigma going into specifically May Symmetra is going to be a tough deal for Winter. So Sparrow can do a great job with Last of breaking the shield quickly. And the 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 Kinetic Grasp, you can't eat May Primary Fire or Symmetra Primary Fire. So you, they could just sit there and constantly damage you even through that ability. So it's going to make things on Winter that much more tougher. But they're coming back. Two big ultimates online, an overclock and a blizzard in tow. Yeah, but it's now the rotation comes out. Bog, like you said, hey, they have this Blizzard online, but so does Last. So this is going to be a name of who can get a better value with it. As Last is going to be using it early on, and Swagmaster is already down out of the fight. Bog's not going to get a chance to use this over uh, Blizzard at all. They're going to use the Overclock, though, from Air. That's just not going to find anything. As CSU are uh, wasting a bit of ultimates there. As Lander University have this thing locked down for the moment great great aggression coming out from lander that's what you got to do with this sigma composition with the with the uh with the sojourn you can't allow it to have the space to find those rail shots get in their face wipe them out quickly as the vikes have to make a swap over to our mantra of their own but out comes the annihilation Annihilation comes out, but Bog has this blizzard to stop things in their tracks, and there it comes out, but they've already lost Adoration and Sparrow with a microwave of damage with a photon beam, finding picks for Lander University as the overtime bar ticks away. Lander, take round number one. 
Uh, again, that was just so much damage on the field for Lander. And by the time the CSG was able to make any kind of semblance of a swap to match, it was just too late. They had the ultimates, that, immor uh, that amplification matrix coming out from Shady late, not only to get the heals and keep alive Rock Drop, but it added so much damage to the field and didn't allow the Vikes to find the picks early in those fights. So very well played in this composition from lander and now that we get village as this next map i feel like if you're lander you could not have asked for a better set of maps to start off nepal to just enhance the composition that you want to play yeah no definitely it should be really um it's gonna be definitely easier for them here but winter going over to the reinhardt to try to get right into the face of rockjaw now should be interesting we'll see if it can work out for them they've already lost air though who's made that swap over the symmetra as well try to get that true dam uh, that damage in with that fo uh, photon beam but right now it's not working out but Ry uh Rylos is gonna fall down this this uh reinhardt might be working out well for csu at the moment rockjaw still punching away pummeling away but still so low nothing's really been found out quite just yet and Rockjaw's gonna fall down CSU have a definite opening for this fight but and they and they are gonna take it last falls down again that uh, the, it was like the opposite of what happened to Lander the Vikes were a little bit more patient I mean yeah they were losing people in the fight but they didn't allow it to like they backed up and allowed you know their reinforcements to get back faster found picks in the meantime and were able to come back and clean it up but significant ult charge slightly in the favor especially with this blizzard for lander last probably gonna have it in this fight yeah, as um, almost finding Swagmaster out there was last early on. Gonna have that Blizzard, like you were saying, very quickly here. And Adoration's gonna use that beep, or beat early on, so they're not gonna have it for this Blizzard that's gonna come online from last now. Shadow comes out, though, but Winter goes down, and that's gonna be the cleanup quickly from Lander. Yeah, and as you mentioned, that's just the power of using nope. that ant matrix to force out that sound barrier because the aggression Lander's playing with, they take full advantage of a sound barrierless blizzard and just coast that to victory. And now the Vikes, they committed a lot to that fight. Annihilation, mm -hmm. sound barrier, blizzard. So now they're coming back and they have to try and take full advantage of this ant matrix, but they're gonna be walking into a buzzsaw of an annihilation from Rockjaw. Yeah, now, um, yeah, it's just gonna be really hard to walk into this. They're gonna have the photon barrier, though, from air, so they can at least deal with some of the damage coming out, but not all of it, thanks to that annihilation that'll come through. Is they're now just chasing him down, the rotation now coming out from CSU to the, uh, way to the point, but they've already lost air, and that photon barrier not gonna be available from them now. Is so there's the photon barrier from Sparrow trying to take them out. Is a nice, uh, Maywall coming through. They are gonna flip the point before the recontest comes in from rock giant company it was the annihilation now coming online forcing back csu the point is gonna flip but still no picks have really come out from lander quite just yet the photon barrier is split off that healing for the moment now with the sound barrier online and uh this could be anyone's fight here they just need to find a pick if someone finds one swagmaster going down and that's gonna be lander coming in maybe not with the annihilation now popped winter comes back and flips it back on their head with air finding a couple of picks in that fight yeah very i mean that was crazy just what do you think lander takes full advantage the ultimates come online just in time for the vikes the, uh, just amazing the problem is joker you're able to win this fight and commit all these ultimates and flip it but now once again you find yourself in that troublesome situation last comes back with the blizzard you have no sound barrier for it and we saw what advantage lander was able to gain with that available to them Rotation comes in from Lander already, and they're going to be walking into this blizzard from last. The point is going to flip in without a contest coming in from CSU quite just yet. So they're just buying their time, building up percentage, and uh, maybe getting this towards last time. Territory is Boo a Bog, however, going to be using their blizzard in response is last as well. So no one's going to find any value with that blizzard until it goes down and Shady falls quickly. So now this is the opening CSU was desperately hoping for. It'll come back into this fight. 
they lose adoration still the trades keep coming through and no one's really found an upper hand but losing Rialis is going to be huge for Lander but again it's just not enough as Rockjaw finds two in response but there's not, doesn't seem to be healing on the point for Lander any longer as the point's going to flip over for CSU one final fight for both of these teams to try and make it out. Ant makes us out on the field, and there's still a photon barrier to be used for CSU. And Winter's getting caught out here. The the uh, Maywall was almost enough to separate Winter away, and now Sparrow's fallen down, and the Annihilation has been built up. This might be enough to bring us to a round number three on uh, New Paul here, especially if they can find the pick, but already a Blizzard is built up from uh, last. They might be able to keep things going, forcing them back. Sound Barrier comes out from Adoration. Still no picks coming in from Lander quite just yet. The Annihilation now on the board, but Winter's found out Shady still picks coming through from both of the two teams but CSU have got the upper hand here as Winter finds Sparrow and that is going to be that round two goes the way of CSU CSU able to strike back in the mirror and says listen you may have gotten the advantage on, on us last map when we played Sigma starting out, but we just proved we can match you in this composition and beat you at it. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind with Lander going forward as we now move in to Sanctum. And this is the map that I was extremely curious about to see where and what direction these teams are going to go with their compositions because this map is very tricky, very finicky. It doesn't really tend to lend itself to conventional compositions. As we see Lander making a full cell swap, they're going to go to a Sigma composition and they're going to have Reaper Torb to have a lot of damage and just pressure to be put onto Winter. So you're going to have to be very careful of that if you're CSU. Yeah, definitely. Um, right now, uh, though, uh, Lander is taking a lot of space in uh, in their favor. Uh, as uh, Sparrow on this uh, Torbjorn is going to get front, front and center with the turret gun, but it is going to go down here early on to the pummels of Winter. As that is just going to be CSU taking this fight quickly in their favor, especially if they don't lose any more, pl if they don't lose any players and they don't do so. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I don't know if Lander was expecting the Vikes to make a swap off of the Ramatra, but maybe they're just not feeling super confident after dropping that map and being able to match the Ramatra, so they feel like they have to make these full cell swaps, but this May is just going to absolutely tear through the Sigma, so you, you, it's, it's hard to keep your space when you can just play up on these corners like this with your Lucio. They're taking out the turret already, but the turret gun's going to come through, get a lot of damage, and Winter's going to fall down. Um, but, oh, okay, almost going off the side of the map. Adoration going to be going, rotating back to their team, looking for a boop off the side of the map, almost finding it, but not uh, almost. Uh, works in horseshoes and hand grenades, Ray, and that's not going to be enough for uh, CSU to keep the hold going. Yeah, you, you would need more than that. And, and, and yeah, you get the pick onto air, and this is just going to continue to be nice staggers, wasting more time, allowing your ability to try and match this percentage. They're going to have to be extremely careful as uh, Boggy to come into the next fight is going to have the Blizzard online, and you don't have any defensive ultimates on, online right now. Yeah, no, as um, we're still... Oh, and Winter is already down and out of the fight as Bog falls down to the Molten Core, and that is just going to be a quick wipe yet again. However, though, Ray, CSU has banked all their ultimates into this next fight. Yeah, this is going to get ugly for the side of Lander. However, you put yourself in a position where you've matched and taken the lead percentage-wise, but as long as CSU uses these ultimates judiciously, and rotate their economy properly, they're going to be able to take the next couple fights. Yeah, as they're going to come in already, but hey, who says they need ultimates, right? They've already found picks in their fight, and they're going to keep it going. All they need is their sound barrier from Rialis, and they keep the point in their favor off the back of Sparrow. The sound barrier able to sustain them through both of those DPS ultimates, and then they're able to use the Death Blossom as the cherry on top of a perfectly well-balanced rotation. That was beautiful by Lander. Annihilation, though, going to come in, and that's just the opening that they're... Oh, I was going to say that's the opening they need, but Winter's just blown up immediately. This is just so much damage they're walking into. They can't make any progress. 
Uh, it's just absolutely devastating, and I don't know, Joker. It's looking like it's going to be tough sledding to try and get a touch. We see the swap over to the Doomfist, but he's already been spotted out. 97% and counting. And Adoration's gonna fall down. I don't think any... Oh, they do get the touch last second with Air swapping over to the Tracer and Sparrow's gonna be felled out. The point is gonna be flipped over. Swagmaster over to the Hiroko. Gonna be felled out by the Rock, though. This is almost all but over here. Air stalling for time. Soundberry is gonna get them a little bit more sustain. Allow maybe for some people to get back from spawn, but Adoration falls quickly. Air goes down as well. Point is gonna flip back over as uh, now is overtime. The point is going to be contested. Death Blossom coming through. Is that, oh, wow. I thought I said I for sure thought Winter was out of that fight, but going to be able to uh, go back out of the point, but it's not going to really matter in the end. The poop comes through and Lander take map number one and the unconventionalness of this map that I talked about comes through for Lander in a big way. This Reaper Torb, it's not a composite you expect to see in these levels of Collegiate, but you get on a map like Sanctum and just the chaos of that map brings out some compositions you would just never expect but king's row and we take a look at these compositions i'm gonna focus in on the defense because that's where we know for sure this team is gonna play you know those spawn shenanigans can happen on the attack so we got lander locked in on the ramatra composition they're like hey listen this is king's row we know the name of the game on this map it is to play the brawl but they are gonna pull out sparrow on that bastion and the, just the amount of damage and the amount of pressure these bastions can put onto enemy teams is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I'm still, despite all the changes that have come into this game, I am still a fan of nerfing Bastion even more. <laughs> no. Keep Bastion in the meta. Keep Bonesaw happy from Miami of Ohio. Let's make it happen. Uh, as now, uh, we run into this already. Um, as uh, Winter is going to be rotating around the statue here for the moment. Maywall is going to come out, though, separating out CSU for the moment. But a nice rock comes through from Rockjaw to keep... Uh, or, sorry, from Winter to keep Rockjaw at bay. Um, as both Bastions are fighting from afar. But, oh, Sparrow goes very low there. This is still uh, anyone's point with the Maywall coming out. Out, still waiting for it to come through. Maywell out from Bog, but still no one finding any picks in the fight quite just yet. As there it goes, CSU finally opening up into their favor, taking down a couple of players. And that is going to be an opening that they were desperately needed and probably going to take this first point. Yeah, for the side of Lander, Joker, the one thing I am worried about is Rockjaw being on this Ramatra. It is going to be tough sledding for you to deal with the amount of damage that Bash you can put on the field. As we've talked about it, Winter, since you're not going into a May Sim anymore, you have a Bastion where you can do a lot to mitigate that turret form, that turret configuration. You can throw your shield out. You can, you know, kinetic grasp and gain a lot of health for yourself. So uh, there's a lot more you can do to help deal with the enemy Bastion than you can on Ramatra. Yeah, there's always been the, 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 the tell that if you see a Bastion on the enemy team, you, you have to go Sigma, pretty much. Uh, but uh, Ant Matrix is going to come out from Shady to come back into this fight to, to set up at the Archway, and Sparrow is just going to burn down Bog after they get down that uh, out of their... Um, Ice block and Adoration falls down as well. Invest in the Ant Matrix though, has Swag Master. So they have to still, uh, they still have an opportunity to take this fight in, uh, as, uh, in this fight. So they have this chance uh, to come in and uh, take it, especially if they can find a pick now. The uh, uh, Artillery Strike is going to come through from Sparrow. Not going to find anything quite just yet though. So still. Um, a blizzard coming in from both of the maze. Sound barrier throw from Rialis is going to keep them going in their way. So still, no one finding a pick quite just yet. But this uh, this flux might be the opening that was looking for. And CSU finding Rockjaw back. And now the, all the cookies can crumble in the favor of CSU. Pushing Lander back. 
again csu they have found their momentum their composition i mean that we saw they wanted to play sigma from the very beginning on nepal and now they have this ability to be able to do that and they're rotating their ults really well they're playing well within their composition the only thing they're gonna have to worry about is this annihilation coming online but you have the perfect counter you have the sound barrier available um, yeah, they do have the sound barrier available, uh, available for my adoration as Rockjaw is going to be looking to use an opportunity to uh, get this Annihilation on board. Uh, but they're just uh, maintaining space. Now the Annihilation is going to come through and they're not going to have an opportunity to use that sound barrier as they've already lost Boo in air. As that's just going to be a full sail rotation and out. But a nice May well sticks them all in the firing range of Sparrow and Rockjaw taking them down. It's a nice team wipe comes through from Lander. Yeah, that was just great patience coming out from Lander once again, using that Annihilation to full effect. Uh, the thing was, Adoration did not commit that sound barrier, so now you're looking to use that to deal with this Ant Matrix that Shady's going to have online. Is they're going to continue to hold this bookstore corner, which is such a strong defensive position to hold? Can they hold it with this window is going to be the big question. I definitely think so, but uh, the real question is when uh, Winter is going to have this uh, Gorilla Flux in a few seconds here. Uh, as now they are just going to push them back, and Rock Jaws already out of the fight, and they are now going to have to try to invest the Ant Matrix here to stop them in their tracks, and that just probably isn't going to be the case because they can just wait it out, and they have this advantage going into it. Sparrow, though, finding Adoration. The Artillery Strike's going to come through as well as the Blizzard. Gorilla Flux comes out, but Sparrow's already found the supports from CS. You so that just the rotation has to come out, they have to reset. It's <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, for the side of Lander, man, they just know how to get so much value. I mean, they did have to commit so much. So, CSU is coming back into this fight and they are looking to strike three ultimates, and they really only have to win one clean fight to get this point across the finish line for point B. Yeah, um, they've got the, they've got this in the bag. Uh, they've got ultimates in the bag to do it. And well, finding Rialis um, already is huge. You cannot rotate out with the Lucio speed boost any longer. And Rockjaw is going to be caught out because of it. That is just going to be that done and dusted. Coming in CSU quickly. <laughs> and the funny part is they don't even really need an ultimate. Yeah, you kind of use the Bastion ultimate there, but it, it's not really much. You kept your sound barrier, you kept your blizzard. So now with two and uh, just two, under two and a half minutes left on the clock to bring this home, I think if you could use these this blizzard, this sound barrier to great effect, you're going to have an ability to try and finish this with over a minute on the clock. Blizzard coming out, and they might have just caught out uh, Rockjaw already, and they do. So Agbass here going to be able to get that final blow on to the uh, Ramatra, and they've already won that fight uh, off the back of just one ultimate. Yet again, CSU have got uh, something uh, changed in that between map one and two. And now they have so much offensive and defensive capability. Lander will be coming back with a plethora of ultimates to be able to use. So the sound barrier from Adoration is going to be of the utmost importance to take advantage of. And they've already lost Sparrow. This is not looking good for Lander Air just through the uh, Ant Matrix. It's just going to do so much damage fighting four picks in the fight and coasting the cart home for CSU. And getting that done with over a minute on the clock is just that it's just amazing because now you have this ability to if you can even get them to fin even if you have a defense to where you allow them to finish if you bring this in overtime you're the only one who gets another attempt at this so that is just a key landmark that they're able to check on their list and it puts themselves in such a str strong position coming into their defense yeah, they are in a very good position here, Ray. We'll see. How can Lander adapt? Can they change things up going into their own attacking phase to try to at least match this time bank? <clears throat> As we see for the side of CSU, no changes for either side, actually, which no surprises mm. here. I mean, it's been a close map. I think all things considered, a minute 27 is not bad if you're land or like, that's not one of those, like the team dominated us and finished us with four minutes and your mentals are just kind of all out of whack. 
Uh, but I, uh, again, I think for the side of of Lander, it's just ult economy problems. I just look back to that second to last fight they had on point B. They threw in like four ultimates into that fight and that just allows CSV to strike back and not have to use anything to get the point. They have made the swap over uh, from the Ramatra to the Sigma um, is Rockjaw. But, I mean, already caught out a lot of damage going in, but the same for CSU. It really won't matter until one of the uh, pick uh, one pick has come in to one of these teams as uh, Lassie is going to get caught out, has to force the ice block in that fight. Air is very low, getting that healing in, but Sparrow's going to be the one to go down after after that content configuration burn down comes through. Now the Maywall comes out and they're just caught yet again here. Uh, they're going to be boot back into the enemy team. Still not going to be able to find any uh, follow up picks. And now the respawn of Sparrow has come back. So this is an opening for Lander to come back into this fight. As they're going to have an ant matrix to be able to push in. And there it is, but a great Maywall. Yeah, Ant Matrix comes through, but they've already caught out air in the fight. Follow up from uh, from Sparrow's damage, but the Flux has already been built up and rocked out of it. Rock Jaw with the play to keep things going their way. It's now uh, the Maywall comes out. They're going to be forcing, uh, they're going to be stopping uh, uh, Rock Jaw for the moment. There's the Blizzard, though, coming out and might be enough to solidify the fight in the favor of Lander with a grid of Flux coming out as well. A lot of people low on the side of CSU. They cannot first. Uh, they cannot uh, risk pushing in. No, they cannot, and that's going to be the first point gained for Lander. And you know, all things considered, this is kind of what I wanted to see out of them. They commit two ultimates, the Blizzard and the Flux, and they're able to get three ultimates out of CSU. That's not a great start to this first fight, <laughs> but uh, uh, they're, they're winning in the ult economy for this next series. Yeah, they definitely are, as now, um, the rotation is R uh, CSU, yeah, they, they've already got this, um, this point uh, available, uh, especially with Bog having this blizzard, and they might not even need the, uh, the, the ultimates now, though, right, so that just might have won them an extra fight here, um, and more time gonna be burned off the clock just because they lost last. Yeah, you, you can't keep letting picks happen early in the fight as the, as, uh, the artillery strike's going to come out, forces out the immortality field, and forces CSU Vikings to back up. Yeah, Bliss is going to come, though, in response. Air very low. Ant Matrix has come out, but the pick's going the way. Maybe not. Bog's going to be going down to a nice icicle from last, but this should be enough. CSU's got Lander running back to spawn. Oh, wow, that's just absolutely devastating for the side of Lander. You get exactly what you needed. You force them back with artillery strike. You push forward, pop your ant matrix, but you allow them to come back screaming with their blizzard and make everything happen as things are just getting worse and worse, but they're down there, Baptiste. Yeah, they're down, Baptiste, but the trade's right there in response, but, uh, okay, <laughs> finally, air goes down there, it was at, like, little 1 HP, um, and now Lander have found those picks and are gonna be moving the cart forward. However, the Vikings will be able to come back in this next fight. Three ultimates to be able to use. So last is going to have to place this blizzard in a picture perfect position for Lander to take full advantage. But if they're able to do that, they're going to be able to capture this point with a good amount of time heading into point C. Yeah, um, especially if they can find this victory here and now the artillery strikes come in from air though with this uh, And they're gonna lose last after the blizzard was invested sound barrier now come out from adoration as well as a couple more Ultimates on the board the flux not gonna find any picks quite just yet But the follow-up damage does as rock just falling down to the grenades of air and air is gonna find another one shady goes down and as uh, Rialis tries to get out yeah, he's going to, which was the wise thing to do. Uh, you did force out everything that the Vikings had. They, they're they going to have Boggs Blizzard, but you're coming up on the Ant Matrix. You're coming up with an artillery strike. You have your flux. That You just got to make sure you don't get picked early in the fight. That's been one issue Lander's been dealing with on this attack. If they can just get a nice coordinated attack going, they're going to be in a good spot. 
They really are as the Amp Matrix damage is coming out from Sparrow and Co. Blizzard's gonna be invested by Bog, but it's a little too late. There's no one to follow up with that damage coming out. Swagmaster does find Shady, but they are gonna be staggered out there. So this should be the point captured by Lander. And only one ultimate had to be used. This is the positives mm -hmm. we need to see. I mean, they're going to get a late contest, but honestly, I think this is a big mistake. They're not going to yeah. be able to have a full team fight. I mean, you force out artillery strike, but you're feeding a lot of ult charge to the side oh. of Lander. Wait, you force out the flux. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The flux and beat comes out. They're trying to get this fight done and dusted, to be fair. So, I mean, I'll take the flux, but the sound barrier, you gotta have saved that Rialis for the next fight. Sparrow comes in with three, and they need to get these late stagger kills to uh, make up for that investment vault. I feel like just when I'm complimenting them for finally getting a stranglehold on this, I mean, they are going to get some of these staggers. Air goes down, but I don't know if it's enough. I mean, all you have is a blizzard to invest in this fight now. The only consolation you have are the Vikings aren't quite there to their sound barrier, so you can take full advantage of this incoming blizzard that Lass is going to have. Yeah, um, they, this has got to be... Uh, the Blizzard has to come on before Adoration can build up to this Blizzard. Or not Blizzard, Sound Barrier. Um, and then... Uh, but Adoration's already so close, you need to invest it here and now. The Flux is going to come out from Winter as uh, it's going to cost out Rockjaw for the moment. There's the Blizzard on to the point. There's still Sound Barrier available and Adoration is going to be still alive, but no one else from Lander is... is that is going to be the fight done and dusted. They're going to try to uh, ball by for time. At last, takes them down. The point is going to be taken in very similar time banks from both of these two teams going into the overtime rounds. It couldn't be closer. Separated by six seconds. And for CSU, that was just a sad sight to see seeing both your Lucio and your Baptiste die without being able to commit those ultimates. I mean, I feel like regardless in the end, if you're Lander, you probably would have won that. But you might have been able to get into a situation where you waste enough time. You never know. It's just always sad to see uh, watching a game like that and seeing ultimates just die without being used. But... We now move. CSU is going to be on the attack first. So the question is, do we see any swaps? We're not going to both these teams. I mean, it's been so even. Why would either of these teams look to change anything? They've both proven in these compositions, they're evenly matched. So it's really just gonna come down to within these compositions, the small little things, the placement of the May wall, the ability to sync up all this damage and isolate enemy tanks and keeping i mean there's only a minute 27 on the clock so anybody who can build up to an ultimate and get this off is going to give you a huge advantage yeah it is going to be a, a little bit difficult though um you get maybe probably you probably get about two fights uh in the end of this so yeah, it is going to be difficult to build up to an ultimate into this fight. It's going to be a little bit more into the advantage of the defense, uh, I would say, because they'll be able to get a little bit more uh, damage in to the opposition as Artie's come in as Rockjaw's uh, a little bit ahead of Winter at the moment. But the Maywalls could be a difference maker, but Winter's already fallen out. You have to just reset immediately. Sparrow's going to find air as well. So there's going to be the quick rotation out from them. But if they find these slight stagger kills, especially if Bognus goes down before they can get into there. They get back to spawn. 60 seconds remaining, Ray. As you're, I mean, you might be able to get one clean fight plus a staggered fi uh, final fight uh, as this next one's going to be extremely important. CSU, the big importance for them is finding a pick early. That's, that's where their advantage is going to come in. Yeah, definitely is last a little bit precarious. They're going to have to force out their... Um, and their ice block early on is oh adoration almost going down as well 30 seconds remaining here ray last is so low the am matrix is going to be invested by uh spare uh by uh shady now the artillery strike coming in from shady uh sparrow as well as that is going to be that last finds two this should be the end of it all here ray as the uh, stagger kill is going to be coming in they're going to try to touch the point somehow some way but five seconds remaining they get there with adoration 
generation. The flux is gonna come out on to someone. Last has fallen out. This could be the opening that they were looking for as the rotation is gonna come out, but the pick comes on to air as well. That's gonna be it. Sparrow finds Bog, and that's going to be the last pick in the attacking phase of CSU. Yeah, Lander being able to get off to a strong start with that first attack, they were able to gain up so much ult charge that in that second fight, you're able to pop that ant matrix. And the problem was CSU weren't dying quickly as a group to be able to regroup and take another fight. They were getting staggered. I mean, and that's a testament to Lander doing a great job of, hey, if we stagger them here, they're not gonna be able to get these full regrouped attacks, especially with the time left on the clock. So it's just well played across the board for Lander. And this is the key of them being able to finish with much with just slightly more time on the clock. Yes, a draw is still on the board, but all they have to make sure they do is get one tick. Yeah, 33.3 repeating. Um, it isn't too hard, but again, you've got six seconds more than what CSU had. You've got to be able to find a pick. You've got to be able to take down Swagmaster uh, early on in this uh, fight if you're a lander, if you want to have any chance in the world to uh, complete uh, this and go 2-0 up in the series. As lander... I mean, that, that's a big deal in a first to four series. I always say uh, it, when you're playing first to three, it is pivotal that you don't allow yourself to go down 2-0. So it's not as big of a deal if you're CSU, but you're allowing Lander to build up a lot of positive momentum in their favor. So I feel like it, you, you got to try and force this draw and get out of here 1-0 still. Yeah, definitely, as uh, the rotations already come out from Lander, they've kind of forced this positioning away from CSU, but they are buying time. They aren't going to really have the amount of fights that uh, CSU had to tr uh, at least try to take this uh, this first point. As it's already down to 60 points, uh, and this is really the first time the fight is breaking out. Uh, as the Maywall comes through, still waiting for anything to happen. Ow, the healing's gonna come through, but Shady's gonna be meet a, Matt with a rock to the face, as they're gonna have to, you need to die quickly if you are Lander, and they do so. They do take out air, which is huge, though. Oh, yeah, they're gonna have oh, a late stagger onto last. That's gonna even things out, but a lot further that you're gonna have to travel to your spare. But I think the, the um, Adoration is doing the right thing as the Lucio going back. Last has to, oh, a, a they're, not, they're not taxing him back. I'm so surprised. Last has Blizzard, too. You, you, I mean, you had to stay if you're Adoration because they're, they're uh, even if you didn't, they're, they're, there's this Blizzard available. No, <gasps> oh, oh my goodness, the Blizzard uh, almost just threw there, got it caught onto that. Um, the uh, uh onto the, the doorway but last has fallen down this is now looking good at all for lander right now the fox is gonna come out this is an opportunity to win this out they're gonna be able to take people down so low but they need to find the picks and they're not gonna be able to do so right alice falls down the critic flux comes out from winter and there it goes tied one all around one oh we going to map number three i mean that's exactly what you needed if you're the vikes I mean, escaping this map, still only being down 1-0, that's got to be a great feeling because facing down the barrel of 2-0 is just going to be tough sledding to come back from. And they did a great job. I mean, they played that defense just as well as Lander, kept their distance, was able to play aggressive. And because they won that... Yeah, this is uh, the other composition I was thinking. We might see is Junker Queens being able to play just fast-paced and quick. Um, so assuming we get these compositions from both of these teams, the for Lander University, uh, having the Tracer, Last, and Sparrow on the Genji, being able to sync up and get these kills is going to be the big name of the game. For the Vikings, however, Air is on this sojourn, so they want space, and they got to find picks fast with those rail shots. Uh, big to note that Swagmaster, who is playing Kiriko, is in fact playing this Grand Finals in full Kiriko cosplay. Um, so hey, I mean that that is just amazing. I, yeah, I love it. Uh, so she uh, and she also copped the Fortnite dub for Chef Billy and Bullskunt before the uh, the matchup. So uh, we'll see if they can continue. Uh, if she can continue their winning ways onto this map here. But right now, uh, Lander University has already gotten uh, the first uh, point control early on. Which 
which is going to be huge for this to going forward with how quickly these points tick up. Both these two teams still waiting, though, for this first pick in the fight as uh, finally Rockjaw is going to go down there as Winter finds him with the Carnage. And now this is the opportunity CSU was looking for. They can go in and take the remaining members of Lander out and get the point into their favor. Yeah, however, with this Tracer Genji, there is the ability to stall out a lot of percentage. And considering, you know, they lost early on Rockjaw to get 41% is kind of a big deal. As CSU will take over on this point as Lass is going to have a pulse bomb. So you have to be very careful if you are C. S U adoration getting really close to the sound barrier, but if last can get in there fast and open things up with a pulse bomb, that's what Lander's game plan is. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be hard, though. I mean, you've got the Suzu to uh, cleanse anything away from them. Uh, so as long as they can land that, it's not going to be an end-all, be-all play. It's now uh, rotations come in from last and adorations find Rialis already. They have found air out, but the trades keep coming through from both of these two teams. This adoration has found Rockjaw. Still, uh, last is in the back line, finding Winter. That damage buff to Tracer working in the favor of Lander right now. Now, and they are continuing to do so finding these picks adoration goes down swagmaster gonna be falling not quite yet still holding things out bog has found shady and now they're gonna invest a uh, genji blade onto this point but last has just found another two picks for lander university as to me that is gonna be a huge mistake for csu you are already in a losing fight to commit that the only thing they have going for them they have to win one more fight and they're gonna have four ultimates to be able to match the four that lander has so it's just gonna make sure they are able to take full advantage as um swagmaster has his katsune rush available this this uh, could give a lot of premise to uh csu coming in this next fight yeah, now uh, coming in here, they've got these ultimates to come back into this. this. Is a nice play coming in, but they might have just done it with those two picks coming in their favor. As Lander University, sound barrier from Adoration, but the rampage from Rockjaw is there, and everything going the way of Lander University. The back and forth of the point continues to go, but it's Lander University coming out on top. I, I guess if you're CSU, the only thing you can take away from that was. We got them to use every ultimate they had, and we were able to bank two of them. So coming into um, coming into Temple is this next point. You're going to have the ability to have a huge advantage coming in with your Katsune Rush and Overclock you can throw into this next fight. Yeah, I mean, uh, Overclock and, and that uh, Kitsune Rush could be devastating. You might only need the Kitsune Rush as well uh, with nothing to really deal with it in uh, response from Lander at the moment. Shady's very close to their own uh, Kitsune Rush, though. Now the Overclock's come through and Rockjaw's been found out immediately. Air finding another pick. Kitsune Rush from Shady has been popped. The point is already captured by Lander for the moment, but again, they've already lost two players and now they've lost another one as swagmaster coming in with a kunai to the dome right alice is hanging from uh, 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 by a limb pretty much as csu comes back at 20 percent yeah for me to steal away that 20 percent is actually a big deal for lander they were losing that fight so that's a big advantage they already gave themselves however csu they have this ability they didn't have to use the katsune rush this fight and that should help them build possibly to a rampage and a blade this is going to be tough for lander to push into there's the uh, katsune rush coming in as the rampage or carnage has come out for the moment trying to get that chip damage though when air is going to go down in the midst of all of that as this is not uh and now looking a little bit better for Lander University as they found Bog as well, but the Rampage invested has got a lot of people in that purple, but it's just not going to be enough, Ray. Last finding Winter with a Pulse Bomb, quickly flipping the point back to Lander University. I mean, that was well played. I was a little worried when they were able to get off the when they were able to get off the rampage, especially since they got shady. So it took that Suzu off the board, but they were able to find those kills fast enough. Wow. It just seems like um, CSU was playing a little bit too split during that fight. They weren't all coalescing on one target. And uh, with, with these compositions, with these Junker Queens, you guys have to have picture perfect target focus. 
Definitely is now. Um, the Rampage has come in from Rock Jaws. Sound Barrio in response from Adoration, though. But Winter is very low at the moment. Blade comes through. Sound Beer not available from Adoration any longer. Sparrows found air, but that's all they're going to find. But the damage has been done, as this is going to be the point going to Lander. To me, that was just picture perfect uh, flow chart Overwatch. If I use the Rampage here, they will respond with Sound Barrier. Therefore, I can come in as soon as it expires with my blade and slice and dice through them as Sparrow did exactly that. And now you're in this position where you only have to win one more point and you're going to be up two to zero in this series. You're going to have both your support ultimates coming in this next fight to help deal with this incoming blade from Bog. Yeah, they've got the blade online from Bog. Is it going to be enough to help CSU come back into this or go? Are they headed to 2-0 down finally in this series after that draw? As Lander coming in with the Kitsune rush early on into the fray of things, but Ryalis is down. Air is going to find another pick. They're not going to even need to use the Dragon Blade here, Ray, to win out the first fight. That's huge. Not only do you not use a single ultimate, but Lander got aggressive, use that Kitsune Rush, and they're not able to take full advantage. They, they will still have this sound barrier available, but it's like that flow chart on the previous point, Joker. CSU has the Rampage and the Blade. Use one, draw out the sound barrier, use the other, and you should be able to win this next fight. So Vikings have an ability to gain a lot of percentage on this point as they're trying to mount a comeback on Saravasa. Yeah, they need to figure it out here, Ray. Like you said, though, they've got the ultimates to do so. They've just got to be able to be a little bit careful with them. Not over-invest quite uh, in, in these fights would be massive because you can need to have alts going into this next point if they do so win this. Is now they're going to go in. Kitsune rushes it. Use, but Swagmaster's fouled out. There's the uh, uh, Rampage out as well coming in from both of the Junker Queens. But it is going to be CASU coming in, but again, they had to use so much to win it out here, Ray, as Bog doesn't find any real value with the Genji Blade. To me, I feel like, yes, would you have liked to have that blade? Absolutely. But to keep your hopes alive on this map and being able to tie up this series, I feel like it's a gambit worth taking if you are CSU. You'll be able to come in this next fight. You're going to have an overclock lander. They're going to have both their DPS ultimates. But if you get aggressive early with this overclock, you can set yourself up to get an early point cap. Yeah, but the only problem is they're going to have to contest with this uh, Dragon Blade and the Pulse Bomb coming in from Lander as Last and Sparrow combining for all the picks in the world as Lander find everything. And still eight seconds to go, but boy, the point unlocks. Yeah, that was going to be tough. It, it was really relying on Ant to pop the overclock and probably find a pick on one of those DPS players, and they just were not able to do it. And the, ta the talent from Last and Sparrow is able to come through in a big way. And now, as you mentioned, because of how much they committed to that last fight, they are just going to have to take a couple of drive fights in a row while Lander has the ability to throw in this Kitsune rush into the next fight. It's just tough sledding for the Vikes. And Winter going very low thinking of that damage on them. They're going to use the Kitsune Rush right into this room, but no. you know what? They're dealt with a huge blow coming in from CSU, finding every pick in response. That was a great game of cat and mouse that the Vikes just played, Joker. They were like, listen, we're going to look like we're coming out and ready to take you on. And then they just sucked them back into that small room and took full advantage. That was brilliant rotations coming out from CSU as now they're able to bring that point in and they were able to bank their sound barrier. Yeah, as now uh, the point is going to be procced by Lander for the moment, but you got to wait it out. You don't really have anything to invest except this pulse bomb coming in, and Adoration has this uh, sound bear to keep things going. His last is going to be felled out while they're looking for the potential stick on to someone, and that is just going to be the fight. Uh, that, and this fight's just going to be wasted out, as uh, this might just be the point going to uh, CSU with the kills coming in their way. 
as things are on the up and up for the Vikes. And look at the amount of ultimates they're now going to have, Joker. I, I feel like, you know, just make sure you don't overcommit to this fight. And you're going to be such a strong position heading into the final sub map. You do lose Adoration, however, but oh, they do get a touch. They do get the touch and the Kitsune Rush and the Rampagers oh. invested here, right? And there's still a chance they could come back into this. The Rampage is going to be invested by uh, Rockjaw, but Shady and Right House are going to be fouled out. It can, you could have hold on that from, from Rockjaw, but again, you force out ultimates from CSU there. And now going into this, Lander's close to tying up the ultimate percent, or, or actually overtaking them in ultimates. Yeah, you put yourself in a strong position for Lander as we head to Gardens for the final sub map. Will CSU be able to tie up the series or will Lander take a huge advantage in the series going up to, to zero? Lander a little bit separated right now. They gotta make sure they take this fight together as a team. They cannot allow anyone to get picked early in the fight. And that was a big issue they had on Kings Row. They cannot allow that to continue to bleed into this map. Kitsune Rush coming in from Shady. Trade coming in as uh, though uh, that trade was short lived. Last is found out air. Uh, Suzu staying off the aggression as the Dragon Blade now coming in from Sparrow as well. They've got to be able to lock up this point, but they lose them in the end. As Swinter finds the shot, Rockjaw taking down at, uh, Adoration. Still, it's anyone's point at the moment. You need to be able to take down a uh, Winter, and there they do. Shady takes takes him down with that kunai to the dome. Okay, I was a little worried for Lander there. I thought they were gonna look to try and commit more ultimates into that fight, but they're able to find that uh, target focus, get Winter down, and be able to win that and still bank both of your ultimates. That's gonna be a big deal, because Vikings, don't have a single ult. They're getting close to this rampage, but that's all they're looking at here is right. Alice can just sit pretty with the sound beer and kind of use it however they see fit in this next couple of fights. As now they go into the uh, go into this last is looking for a pulse bomb. Hopefully not going to pay for it with their life this time. However, uh, but they've already lost Shady. Is now they've got to find good value from this pulse bomb, or they're looking to give it up. And hey, you know what? Just don't invest the pulse bomb now, uh, unless there's a drastic change coming through. But Bog's going to be able to take them two uh, two remaining stragglers down with the dash two. This is getting precarious for both of these teams. Lander's kind of in a position with 70% that they were able to gain, where they put a lot of pressure on the Vikings if they're able to flip this point, but the Vikings have a lot to be able to commit into this next fight. Rialis, there's a lot on his back with this sound barrier, but there's just so much, a rampage, a blade. You can't mitigate all of that with the blizzard. I mean, with a sound barrier. Rampage comes in from both of the Junker Queens yet again. And there's the Pulse Bomb finding air out. Bog with the Dragon Blade is oh, hunting for Shady. Shady goes down and Swagmasters pop their own Kitsune Rush on the point to keep things going in the way of CSU. The point's taken. Oh, they've overtaken the point progress and now they've taken out Sparrow as well as this could be the map done and dusted in the series tied up. I think that is, you weren't able to get out or die quick. If you were Lander, you might have had the ultimates to be able to get back in and make something happen, but you just don't have it. CSU are able to reverse sweep Suravasa, and now we are in a one-to-one -one series. Yeah, with probably Sojourn and maybe a May. Yeah, I, I definitely see that in the cards. Uh, with the amount of space that you have provided on a map like Esperanza, <clears throat> excuse me, like Esperanza, the Sojourn it, being able to take those angles and get those rail shots is going to be a huge deal. I still think May is always going to be very much so on the table. To the ice, the, the May walls are just so important. Even with the changes they got to less amount of ammo in your primary fire, it doesn't matter. May slowing ability is just so needed. Um, they are going to be going into um. No, uh, Esperanza quite quickly here, Ray, as we're going to be seeing a guess of what these two teams are going to be playing in a few short moments. And uh, I, I'm, I, I'm at a loss for words from uh, listen, Lander University listen, currently. Listen. 
But uh, I, I'm worried. I, I think CSU is more towards what we could see from them. Well, yeah, I, I definitely agree as we get you over. I kind of didn't want to make the comment, but they are going to roll out with this. So they are going to play Wrecking Ball Dive, which... <laughs> Oh, I am all for this. Oh. You don't get to see Wrecking Ball a lot. Um, going against Junker Queen, uh, the, I think the only issue I see with playing this composition going against this Junker Queen is the only diveable semblance of a target to me is air on the Sojourn as they're going after them right now. I'm just so confused. Why play uh, Wrecking Ball when Doomfist and Winston got buffs in the last patch? I mean, you've already found Aaron, so I mean, it's working out for you. But again, as uh, uh, they're going to be able to keep things going in their way, Lash is going to be able to have the focusing beam down, and they are going to find that first fight win and get the block going in their way. But it's such a. Uh, it's so weird to see Wrecking Ball being played when uh, supposedly two uh, heroes, dive heroes, are better. So a couple of theories I have, at least regarding to this, is going against a Junker Queen specifically, Wrecking Ball's ability to just disrupt and get in and get out limits how much value you can do on the Junker Queen, because the value in the Junker Queen is being able to constantly get your bleed up, and if you're getting booped around and can't hit anybody with your knife, then it's going to be a very detriment, as we see them already having to swap Winter over to the Sigma. Yeah, making the swap over to the Sigma is going to be a little bit harder to deal, uh, or make things a little bit easier to deal with the Wrecking Ball here, uh, with that accretion rock, but, and, well, Sparrow falling down as well to the, uh, rail shot of Arrow, Air as well is going to be huge, uh, and, well, that's going to be a quick opening and a quick retake from CSU. <clears throat> that it is, however... A lot of distance already gained for Lander. They'll be able to come back, and they're going to have a lot of ultimates in their back pocket because of some of the switches CSU made. They do not have any ultimates to be able to work with. So uh, advantage still going to be in Lander's favor coming into this next fight. As now, uh, they're going to be using the... Yeah, the minefield is going to come out, and there's the pulse bomb as well. It's going to be caught by the uh, uh, the immortality field, though, and Sparrow is going to be caught out by the whip shot, which, and interestingly enough, got a little bit of a nerf recently. So still doing a good job for the moment as they are going to find the pick on a Swagmaster, but I think they need to make the swap off the Wrecking Ball now. Yeah, I definitely agree now that they've adjusted and played the Brig with the Sigma, and then you throw in the ability for Swagmaster with that Immortality Field to keep things alive. That's where you need to swap. Maybe they look to go one more time and use their ultimates, but I think at this point you might want to look to just biting the bullet. Yeah, it's now the forward spawns are going to go into the face uh, in the ways of uh, CSU for the moment. Roll throughs comes through, and there's the uh, minefields out from the fight. As, um... Rally is in there as well coming in. The still ultimates are going to be in the way advantage of CSU as last or does the copy through, but not going to find any value quite just yet. As CSU keeps things going their way. They do find Swagmaster, but it's just, I think, a consolation pick going in the way of Lander for the moment, unless there's a huge drastic change going back to their way. Yeah, and just look at the ult staggering ults you've been able to build up for the side of CSU, and that's that's going to be a late stagger. Oh, they're not even going to kill them. They're just oh, this is this is absolutely disgusting. Late, late stagger onto Shady as CSU is punishing Lander for not making any swaps. Yeah. Um. Uh, CSU has definitely gotten a little bit, uh, gotten more and more comfortable as the series has gone on. Now, things are going very much in their favor. They're winning these flights out with only one ultimate invested. Now, Lander's trying to come back in. But they haven't really got something to do, so they've got this rally, but that's about it. And they're walking into a four-pack coming in from CSU. The ultimates have come through, and now three of them have been invested by CSU. Can they find this fight win in their favor? and they are going to take down Ryan Alice, who has just used their rally. Pulse Bomb does take down Adoration, but again, oh, and they're going to be able to take down Air as well, but the Swagmaster is fighting shots on the Shady as they are going to be fighting these picks. Still, the trades are coming in, but it's going to have to favor out uh, Lander because of how close the spawn is. Yeah, th this is uh, get as much distance as you can and try and get out. Or they might even look to just die on this cart because they have the ability here with those forward spawns to take another fight in the midfield no matter what. 
Yeah, I mean, and now it's where you can just take these fights at uh, the archways, really, if you really want to. If you're a uh, CSU, you've gotten so much advantage uh, yeah. over Lander. Uh, this is not looking too good. Is uh, fine. Uh, they've Lander's finally made that swap off of the Wrecking Ball over to Rockjaw, Rockjaw over to the Junker Queen now. Yeah, one big issue you're going to be facing, however, CSU's coming back with a blade and a rally to be able to throw into this fight. As Lander, they might get Tactical Visor, but that's going to be late in the fight. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is. As now they're going to go in with the commanding shout. And oh, well, a a Adoration almost fell there uh, with a nice uh, combination coming through. But it's not going to be enough. As now the rallies come through and last is been fouled out. Air with the secondary fires taking heads. As that is going to be CSU quickly back in the favor of the bot. And they only had to use the rally to keep up the sustain. They're able to bank Bog's blade. So we're going to have a matchup of this Dragon Blade versus the Tactical Visor, which the one thing you could be worried about if you're Bog is if you do pop this blade, last could pop the Tactical Visor and force out your Reflect early, and then the team can focus you that much easier and mitigate the value of your blade. So you got to be very careful about that. You do indeed is now uh fight is broken out here and Sparrow's found adoration, but Air is gonna get that trade back on the last who had that tactical visor all ready to go. Sparrow very low here, gonna get some healing up though. Uh so, okay, Air is almost gone down there, but gonna be able to slide away for the moment. As they're just waiting for that respawn to come through as the rotations come through and, and the midfield. As the Ant Matrix is going to come in from Swagmaster. Rampage comes out and it's going to purple up four. And that is going to help Lander take this fight as the Axel Visor comes through as well. They do lose Sparrow, but it's not going to be enough to change the tide of this fight as last goes crazy. Oh, the big question. Oh, Sparrow is not able to get the close spawn. That's a little unfortunate, considering he has the big ultimate you're waiting for in this next fight. Because the Vikings are coming back, they have so many ultimates to be able to recommit into this fight. If you're Lander, I feel like you need to uh, look to position yourself very well to take advantage of this incoming blade that Sparrow has. Yeah, as now um, the Dragon Blade has come out. Uh, they're going to try to run away. Commanding Shout got going to be enough to keep Adoration in the fight as airs fall down as well. Rotation has to come out from uh, CSU, but last takes down too late there with the, uh, the Helix Rockets. And Winter goes down. Wow. What? This is just getting worse and worse for the side of the Vikings. However, they're going to have an ability. They're going to get one more recontest before Lander can take the lead. And Lander has nothing in their ult economy to work with. I feel like you need to win this with either just the Blade or the Rampage if you're CSU. Bruh. But they lost Adoration. They lost Adoration. Rampage is going to come in, but it's going to be Suzu'd away for the moment. Dragon Blades now come out. That could be enough, but they've already lost two. The trades come in. Bog so low right now as well and they're gonna be taken down by sparrow shady is gonna have gonna be fouled out though they are taking this fight at the moment it's trades gonna be coming out rockjaw looking for the pick sparrow very low at the moment probably literal one hp rockjaw there as well gonna go down in the end and they're able to stop them on the doorstep is csu just over a minute left on the clock and last finds an exiting pick on to air this is incredible for the side of lander who's coming back and they're gonna have such a huge ult advantage in this next fight i feel like the comeback is real for lander they can do this as the sound barrier comes out to counter the tactical visor yeah, it's going to buy them time. 60 seconds to go. Kitsune Rush now coming through. If you can stave off uh, the, the aggression that comes through from it, but they've lost Adoration. This is uh, now just has to be a quick backup coming in from the rest of CSU. They cannot afford to lose anyone going anymore, but Winter is going to go down. Swagmaster is going to fall out. And this might be the overtake coming in from Lander here. Yeah, they do not have a lot to work with. You're going to have a Katsune rush, but you're facing down the barrel of not only a rampage, but a blade with no sound barrier. Adoration goes down. 
And there's the Rampage coming out. The Kitsune Rush in response, but there's just not a lot to deal with. Swagmaster's falling down. Winter's still on the point, but this might just be all she wrote. Sparrow's found a couple picks as it's down to overtime now. It's all oh, just meeting the damage done, and there it goes. Only one push to the bot. Lander takes the map and goes up 2-1 in the series. As after losing so much distance on that Wrecking Ball composition, they're able to focus in, match up on the Junker Queen, and come back from, basically it was like 120 to what, 30? That mm -hmm. was an incredible match between both of these teams. Both but Dive is also extremely prevalent on this map. And okay, so this was something uh, that we're seeing from Lander that I kind of theorized when I saw the patch notes coming out. I expected mm -hmm. us to be in a meta at some of the higher ends of Overwatch where you'd be playing like, for example, if you're in Korea, I feel like this Winston with like Tracer Sombra and Kiriko Lucio would be insane. I mean, you substitute for the Genji, but plays the same role that the Sombra would. I think this is a really good composition. And I like Sombra a lot more at the moment just because of the EMP uh, uh, buff that it got uh, with three seconds instead of a, a second and a half. Uh, but we're going to see how they can deal with this uh, rush comp that uh, CSU is uh, attempting to play here into them. Um, but again, it is going to be hard to deal with this Winston with the damage that now can be outputted by Rockjaw on the Winston as they've already found air out and they are going to be able to take this first point. Yeah, I mean, that, that's going to be the name of the game. Last, Sparrow and Rockjaw all being able to coalesce onto these targets and wiping them off of the field very quickly before Air can take these angles and find these rail shots as, you know, Rockjaw goes low and that's going to be the name of the game. They just were not able to confirm the kill. Yeah, able to get out, but uh, the last is going to have to for a recall there to stay alive and healthy as now there's the pick coming on to last as that's the opening, an opening CSU can uh, build upon as now they come in and take Sparrow out of the fight and they look to confirm this fight win with Rockjaw falling down as so does Rialis and well, Shady is the last one on point, going to be able to go teleport out? Where, where are the... Where's the, where's the Kiriko? <laughs> oh, there she is. <clears throat> and this this composition that you are playing with CSU. It's going to be built much better for being able to hold positions and be able to wait for this Winston to come in and look to be able to hit them with your carnage and be able to get a lot of that bleed going on the Winston. And that, that's what they're looking for. They're coalescing on him. There's the uh, Kitsune Rush, though, in response as well. Uh, Adoration going to be using that sound barrier. The Kitsune Rush in the response, though, for Swagmaster and is going to be able to help uh, and going to just do a little bit better than Landers as they're going to find picks and keep uh, the point in their favor. Yeah, as this is where things get a little bit tough for the Winston composition. It, it, it's not a lot of damage on that field. So if they're not targeting, you know, like Blog and Air and getting them out early in these fights, it's going to be tough. And that's exactly what we're seeing Rockjaw having to now go over and match this Junker Queen. But we saw what happened last time they matched the Junker Queen back on East Bronze. They had one crazy comeback. Yeah, um, it's now uh, CSU is just in a really good position to keep things going their way as the Rampage is going to come in early on, but they've already found uh, Adoration out of the fight. Sparrow's going to be using their own uh, Dragon Blade in this. They are going to find a, a pick onto Rialis, but so many people low on the side of CSU here. It's just going to be so over, uh, it's too overwhelming to come back into the fight. Yeah, and you're going to get this in a nice spot for C, uh, for Lander, that even if you end up dropping this point one more time, there's just enough percentage on the clock where you're going to be able to come back with a fully regrouped fight. Last is going to have a Pulse Bomb, but that's all they're looking at in this fight. So we're having Pulse Bomb from Last versus Overclock from Air. Who's going to step up for their team? Well, the overclock is going to be the first thing to go into this fight as uh, Air is going to be super low and going to be taken down by Rockjaw. The commanding shout coming out, but they do fall down afterwards. And now the point is being contested. Pulse Bomb comes through, though. Still not going to find anything. The point is going to be flipped over into the favor of CSU now. And they're going to lose Sparrow in this fight. They might have just lost this first round of Busan here, Bray.
Yeah, the the thing for Lander was if you were going to get a recontest here, you needed to you needed to keep the point and just everyone die. I mean, you're going to get Rockjaw coming back, but that that's just going to be it. That I mean, CSU, great job. They're able to win the first point and get some positive momentum going in their favor. Yeah, some late contests coming in from Lander, but it's just not going to be enough. The wave too big from CSU uh, as that is going to be round one going the way of the Vikings. And this is kind of what we talked about. We felt like when it came into these speedy compositions with the brawl, that's where CSU is going to have their advantage. They're able to do a great job and force it on, <clears throat> on a map like downtown. This, this is where things get interesting because this is the map, in my opinion, where things, as I mentioned before, is in the preamble, that things aren't so cut and dry as Lander's going to go over to more of a Sigma based composition to try and disrupt a lot of the speed that CSU was trying to play with, especially with Sparrow on the May. Yeah, I like to. Uh, I think they've looked their best when they're on the Sigma composition. Uh, and then this is probably what they have to do to win it out here because you don't really want to play these games of going in to uh, other maps. You want to end it here and now if you are Lander. As um, the uh, the fight is going to go. And already Swagmaster is pretty low at the moment though, uh, right? So they're going to have to back up for a moment but CSU is procking the point and you're going to be able to take this first uh, capture percentage right now. Um, but yeah. they are going to lose Bog in the, in the meanwhile. So now this is, is going to be the opening that Lander can go in on this. And now rotate to the point and take it back before it gets really too out of hand. Especially with that pick on the air as well as Winter going so low. Yeah, that's the thing with the Sigma composition. Yes, you are playing a Lucio and a Baptiste with it, but it, especially, you know, versus a Junker Queen, you're playing a lot more patient and playing for picks from last and, you know, Sparrow trying to find things with the freeze and they, they just played it patiently, able to find the picks and they only allow 18% to go for the Vikings. Now they're able to take a strong defensive position and really look to find, I mean, they found air already. <laughs> Yeah, they found air already, and they might have just won them uh, at least 10 more percentage because they can't really push in without that damage of air, especially if they find these picks onto someone else. But you cannot afford to lose Rockjaw as they're going to be able to speed away for the moment. Immortality field forced out by land, uh, forced out from Lander, and now it's gone. But now the Ant Matrix gets popped. Ant Matrix is popped indeed, but again, they're just waiting it out, really. Is but uh, Winter uh, on a journey there away from the rest of their team, gonna be caught out there by Sparrow and company with that May wall and well, buy them more, even more time. And it can probably get up to 60% before this next fight breaks out. And uh, this is where things are getting dangerous. Adoration's gonna have the sound barrier to be able to commit into this fight, but you're running into so much from Lander offensively with this flux blizzard and tactical visor combination. Yeah, I think this, uh, I think the tactical, or not that, uh, the gritted flux is gonna be the one to go in first, but hey, they're gonna advance both here. The flux and the blizzard going in and the sound barrier is gonna be there to counter out both of them. The uh, Kitsune rush comes in now. This is the opening that, uh, that CSU could definitely take advantage of the tactical visor though coming in and cleaning up the remaining members or at least help trying to help clean up the remaining members air does go fine last in the end but again it's just a little bit too much from uh, lander as the damage is there and it's already up to 90 percent there might not be a real good contest coming in from csu here yes a lot is on the back of air and blog out comes the overclock but the sound barrier is out yeah, uh, overclock is there from air, but the, like you said, the sound barrier has come through. The swap over to the wrecking ball from winter to try to buy time, stall for uh, anything, uh, any pick coming in. Bog has this dragon blade. Can they find something, anything? But now their sights have been changed over to uh, uh, winter on this uh, wrecking ball. Shady has been found out. Winter goes down. So does Bog, and the overtime bar takes away. Lander ties it up. 1-1. One, one. 
Yeah, that was just too much to ask of Bog. If you were going to take advantage of that blade, it would have had to been while that overclock was active, but Bog was taken out early by Sparrow. So now it's going to come down to Mecha Base. And this is where I talked about the Brawl composition coming out from CSU. This would probably be the best map for the composition they want to play as Lander is going to make some changes. So because they know that they're expecting more of a Brawl style composition from from the Vikes, they're going to put last on the Reaper and Sparrow on the May. So a lot of not only slowing that you throw onto the speed that they're trying to play at, but a lot of damage with this Reaper to try and find these picks quickly. Yeah, this is going to be really hard to run into uh, Lander's composition here. If you are a Winter specifically, uh, just a lot of frontline damage is going to be able to come out from the Reaper specifically, uh, especially if you can force them, uh, focus them out with the Maywall. But, well, the Maywall not going to find anything quite just yet um, as uh, ticking away the timer until it is open for uh, capturing. As uh, Zrakjaw is kind of low, but obviously going to be able to get the healing now uh, Forcing the point uh, is going to be Sparrow on the May, and a lot of people are low on CSU as the point is going to be taken by Lander already. <laughs> as no one's going to be able to go down, as last is going to be the way they'll find the pick, or uh, is going to be the one to be picked out. But it, it doesn't seem to matter as now uh, they are able to come back and find uh, picks in response from Lander with the Amp Matrix already built up from Shady as the damage is going to be coming through, and the point is already up to 20% here right yeah that's where things get dangerous for the vikings they needed to get out of that fight they couldn't afford to continue to stagger especially since lander had already gotten the point in their control you were able to force out ant matrix but now comes the flux it's got flux, three uh, flux comes through but the ant or uh, sound bear is there in time and air is gonna be able to take down spare rampage now comes through right is gonna be able to pop the sound bear of their own to keep things going their way kitsune rush trying to be able to be the follow-up that they desperately need to they need the fight uh, win this fight and they are gonna be able to do so off the back of air and those rail shots. Uh, you're able to get this to 50%, however, and you're able to force out three of the ultimates outside of the Vike. So that, I mean, all things considered, that's pretty good for Lander. You're going to come back in this next fight. You're going to have a Blizzard and a Death Blossom with no sound barrier available for adoration. So that's going to rely on Bog and Air to make something happen with this Blade and this Overclock before Lander can get aggressive with these ultimates. As now last is going to come in and already take Bog out. Now they still have this Death Blossom available to use in concurrence with this uh, Blizzard if they so desperately want to, but they don't need to, Ray. They've already found all the picks they need. Yeah, absolutely devastating. They get aggressive and a great Maywall coming out from Sparrow, and then he's able to follow up with just as good of a Blizzard, and just in an instant, they're able to reflip this point. The one thing you take away if you're the Vikings, you didn't use any of your ultimates, so you still have those available to be able to come back and try and flip this point just as fast as CSU was able to do. As now uh, it comes through the AIR, uh, the, there's the overclock coming in from air, but they haven't been able to find picks. They've found damage and now uh, forcing them away from uh, back to the point. But the flux has come out from Rockjaw, slamming them down. Bog is out with the fight, still not been able to use this Dragon Blade. The damage is coming through from Lander to force CSU away at the moment. Death Blossom still available from last, but not going to be using quite just yet because they are still so low of HP. HP. They've lost Sparrow. The point is going to be lost as well. But now, Last comes through with the Death Blossom, finding two, almost finding out Winter as well. But that's going to be a nice re engage. The healing's already there. The Rampage coming out. And that could be the cleanup. And it is the cleanup that they're looking for. The Kitsune Rush was invested, though, by Swagmaster. <laughs> Yeah, that's not what you wanted at the end of that, because all it's going to take from Lander is one more fight. Adoration, however, is going to have the death block. I mean, uh, going to have the going to have the sound barrier, and there's not a lot for Lander to be able to work with. It's going to be basically two fights as you're hoping to build up to this blizzard and try and force out the sound barrier in the meantime. Uh, when Sparrow goes down early on here, Ray, this might be... Oh, but over no. There's still gonna be a chance for a fight here, Ray. Oh yeah, there, there definitely is. Oh, that pick on the Shady is not gonna be great. So the thing they'll no. probably have to do is look to speed underneath, but they're already aware of that and they're puppy guarding it. 
They are indeed, but Sparrow is so close. Oh, well, that, that's it. That's it. Uh, it really is. I mean, Sparrow was so close to that blizzard, and now the flicks are going into the way of CSU. Uh, the sound barrier is going to come in for my house. If they can be able to hold on and let Sparrow get back to this point without losing any more members, this could still go the way of Lander, but it's really close to going to CSU. Last is so low. You've got to stay on point. The blizzard is now built up, and they're going to be able to get there in time, but there's not a the damage needs to be there. You need to stay on point, though, if you're a Lander University. They get back out of the point. There's still picks coming into the way. A CSU last in uh, uh, Rajar solo. And the point goes the way of CSU. And it's 3 2. Go into map number seven. Absolutely ridiculous series between both of these teams. CSU's map pick comes through for them in a big way, and they're able to take the map of Busan and keep their hopes alive of being able to come back in this and win the grand finals. Matters is um, uh, CS, you were able to take that last map. Now we're headed in to uh, a very decisive map because if you let CSU come back yet again, it's all tied up. It's now Lander. It's Lander's do or die, I would have to say, because if you lose this map, all the momentum in the world is there for CSU, Ray. Oh, could not agree with you more. This feels like this has to be the crux, the nail in the coffin for Lander to bring this home. And defensively, going back, to what did them justice um, throughout this series with the, the Sigma, with the Bastion and the May. Gotta be on high alert if you are the Vikes. Yeah, as now, uh, they're not gonna come into this fight. I mean, they're, they're just waiting their time. I mean, uh, Winter on this uh, Junker Queen has been just so good for CSU. They need to be able to find these picks that they were looking, uh, they've been able to get throughout this series so far. And there it is, Rajah goes down early on. This is huge for CSU. Now they can push in even more from um, even forward now and gonna be able to go into even more. As Sparrow's gonna fall down now. Is this gonna be quickly? It seems going to the way of CSU. I mean, unless uh, last has found Bog, and now they can wait for this respawn to maybe come back. But Shady going down is not what you wanted to see. Yeah, this is going to be the first point going the way of CSU. Unless there's a last second recontest, perhaps. There's an opportunity yeah. since you're able to get yeah. that exiting pick on a Swagmaster. It looks like they're going to go for it, as that's a lot of cooldowns forced out of Rockjaw. They go down. Yeah, that is a lot of... Uh, uh, it is a lot and well winter finds them both in five minutes and 15 seconds on the board already for csu going into the second day second phase and that's just how you got to play this fast-paced junker queen composition basically get in the face of lander and not allow them to give a chance get a chance to even react they're dead before they can even realize it yeah as now um Coming into this, um, uh, last has this blizzard available uh, to go uh, and take it, uh, take the fight early on. As this uh, is gonna be huge, there's a nice May wall coming in, and they're gonna be in a takedown winter. It's just a huge play. Uh, the ice queen taking down the uh, well, all of winter is huge, uh, for uh, everyone in uh, this uh, time frame at the moment. Yeah, I'd say that's gonna be like one of the keys to success for the side of Lander is going to be able to find key walls to be able to isolate, la uh, to be able to isolate Winter away from their team. Yeah, Air is going to be using the uh, overclock early on, though. Uh, so, uh, but it's not going to find anything now. Blizzard onto the point as well is just going to help them solidify this fight. And the Kitsune Rush is going to be invested here by Swagmaster. They are going to be able to take down Rialis. There's still a chance for uh, CSU to keep things going, and they're going to be able to take down last as well. The Grid Flux is up from Rockjaw, if so needed to win this out, and you could just so use it here and now with a lot of people low on the point of CSU. But I mean, you might not even get the opportunity with Shady falling down, they're going to have to just give it up as Winter's going to take down Rockjaw. 
And being able to do that with only the commit of the Katsune Rush and the Overclock is going to open the floodgates for CSU. You'll be able to come in, and again, it's like what we talked about on Suravasa. You're going to have the ability to use, you know, either the Blade or the Rampage to force out the Sound Barrier and then use the other to finish the job. Yeah, it's, um, we'll have to see uh, who, what what what's proc first. I would expect the Dragon Blade because of well, maybe not any ultimates coming in. Is uh, well, the Rampage is going to come through, and they are going to get four in the back. So now the Flux is going to come in response, and there it comes the uh, Sound Barriers out from both of the two. Lucios is still waiting for the uh, advantage to either of these two teams, and there it goes, and almost uh, there Adoration taking the points but in the end uh they are uh, lander is able to stop them in the doorstep yeah huge stop coming out from lander it's going to allow them to take a lot of time off this clock and it's going to be some nuts sorry some much needed breathing room and just a sigh of relief and they're going to have a, a lot to be able to work with here and even if you try and go for a quick contest if you're csu spare could just throw bob onto this point and he can contest uh yeah it's now oh you, well, you need to get the touch! <laughs> Again, you just, you, you can't really take this advantage. You can't uh, push to this high ground any longer. I, I would think you're, you have to keep someone right there at all times because of uh, how sneaky Adoration has been throughout the series. Uh, as, uh, now they are going to take out Swagmas. They are going to lose last, but uh, I think this should still be the case of Lander holding out strong. Yeah, they were playing with fire right there. That was close. That was, what, like 0.5 meters away from getting delivered. But at last, they're able to make it work. And now they're going to have a blizzard to be able to throw onto this point. Uh, and again, I think we're looking at Aaron. This next fight has the overclock. Did a great job on the last one. Going to have to come through their team once again as we're approaching almost a minute left on the clock. As you know, in the blink of an eye, Lander has silently been draining so much time. As yeah, now, uh, there is the Gravitic Flux coming out, and they are going to be taking air out of the fight here. This should be, yeah, the, the fight going their way, unless, I mean, uh, Jockshaw is going to be losing now. The Blizzard's going to have to be invested to really clean up this fight, and they are going to be able to do so. A uh, minute to go, but nothing really on the board for Lander here. Yeah, there's just, I mean, yeah, there's not a lot for Lander to work with. Just under a minute, that's the good thing, was, you know, they, for CSU, they forced out ultimates, kept theirs, so now they're in a really good spot. You could use this overclock to look for kills. You can use this sound barrier to just sustain yourself, but they need to move quickly, because Rialis is getting really close to being able to build up to a sound barrier of their own. Yeah, you gotta be able to get up to that. That would be massive if Rialis can hold or get the sound barrier on without losing anyone. Is Rockjaw gonna have to rotate away? But Rialis finds Bog. They do lose their Sigma in the meanwhile, though. So now they're gonna have to use the sound barrier onto the point and wait it out. Now the rampage is built up. There is the uh, Bob coming in, though. This could be huge to keep things selling out because it's procking the point. They are gonna be uh, traded out two for two at the moment the overtime bar ticking away the bob doing all the work as they are going to be able to keep things going unless the respawns come back and have anything to say about it as rialis has fallen down there's still a chance they are swapped over to the moira is shady to get that extra bit of healing on to the point and i think it's going to work out for them as bog cannot use their dragon blade whatsoever the supports are there though from csu they can stall things out for a little bit longer but not for much longer as the overtime bar is ticks away in an instant as now lander university have their sights set on grand finals uh, point if they can push it to almost the end of point number two Let, let's just you know say it like it is if you can complete second point, because that was just dangerously close for CSU, you are going to be the grand champions. So Lander, clear win condition. CSU is going to have to stop them from completing point A and point B, and then they're going to have to take us to a map number, what would it be? Um, map number three, eight. It'd be eight. It's, it's insane, but it's definitely possible.
I've seen plenty of teams get first point held on this map. So Lander cannot afford to relax. They, they definitely cannot. Uh, oh, you're right. Uh, but we, we, we'll see in the end. I mean, uh, again, not making any swaps uh, from their uh, defensive phase after they made that swap over to Sparrow on the uh, Ash, which worked pretty gosh darn well, I would say, um, uh, on that defense. Oh, I definitely agree. I, I liked the adaptation to go Sparrow on the Ash. It was tough for them because even if you look to dive that Ash with like your Genji or you look to speed into them with your Junker Queen, they can just coach gun away and buy themselves a lot more space, especially on that mid high ground. They can even get themselves off of it if they absolutely need to. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, they're going to look to continue to push here with the Sigma composition. I'm curious how this Junker Queen is going to work defensively. Looks like they're going to look to hold close on the staircase. Yeah, they, uh, they are going to take air out of the fight already there, right? So uh, this could just be a, dra a huge opening for Lander, especially if they keep fighting picks like that. And they do. Bog's now down. So is Winter. And that's a huge a blistering first point capture. Um, and just as quick, decisively, and swift as CSU was. But we saw this motion picture play out on the attack for CSU. The Lander was able to hunker down, make some adjustments, and drain all the time off of the clock. So that is still on the table. However, CSU not changing anything up. They're going to stick to their guns on this one. I mean, and this is what's been working for them when they've won their maps. I mean, you, you can't change it up quite just yet. But again, if it gets too close, you might have to make a diff uh, a change to make a difference. Rockjaw going to be caught out for the moment. Going to be uh, dealt with some uh, carnage damage. But Shady now has this Ant Matrix available. This is the go sign that, um, uh, that Lander could desperately use in this fight. Get that extra bit of healing. Get that extra bit of damage the blizzard's gonna be the one to go in and they're gonna be able to get a nice one on this hour there's the ant matrix to follow up on the all the frozen targets for lander and they might have put themselves up to last fight territory here ray yeah final fight however csu is coming back and they're gonna have an entire war chest to be able to work with so uh it's gonna be tough i feel like you you know you take this try and draw out as many ultimates as possible and try and bank as many as your own as possible because i'm not sure you're going to be able to win this with just the three ults you have i mean unless you find a pick early in uh, from one of these two teams the rampage is going to come out gravitic flux comes out as well they're still investing into this all the ults that have were in uh, available have come out from lander university as they find winter first and foremost that could be the huge difference maker the overclock has come through from air and needs to find picks so does this dragon blade sparrow goes down might be enough to keep things going but it might not be it's it's 0.08 meters, meters away, and the picks keep going into the favor of Lander University here, Ray. This might just be it, and it is. The Bearcats have done it. The claws are out, and they've taken the grand finals in the emergence tier. Insane matchup. Both these teams showed out, but Lander throughout this series, they were able to just make adjustments mid-series, mid-map, and were able to make it work. Sparrow coming out on the Ash was a beautiful adjustment and they just played it picture perfect. And I think that was a big differentiating factor in the series was Lander's ability to make adjustments mid-map.